I want to read to you today and share a message that I'm going to call it survival kit from while in quarantine. We turned last few messages into a series and we're going to call it while in quarantine. And so if you have, um, if you're on internet, you can actually have all the notes uh, given to you on hungrygen.com slash notes or you can go to Bible app and click on events and find them there. They will disappear within one week but they will still be available on our website under the sermon page. Acts chapter 27 verses 23 and verses 24. For there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord of whom I belong and whom I serve saying do not be afraid Paul you must be brought before Caesar and indeed God has granted you all who sail with you. Therefore take heart men for I believe God and it will be just at, as it was told me. I think that this season of people dying and in being infected, fear lingering in our nation everywhere and I think one of the worst sufferings for those of you or of us who don't get this disease is that we are suffering and will be suffering the consequences of financial recession. With a lot of jobs that are being closed down, with a lot of businesses laying people off and with a lot of employees losing their income and being able to um, look tap into their savings if they have any. I think that is a suffering that most of us will come under also even if we're not infected or we don't come in contact with coronavirus. Every person to some degree is suffering. We have to understand where suffering came from. God didn't plan suffering. God did not intend suffering. Satan used sin to infect the world with suffering. All the suffering can all be linked to sin in the garden. But I find it interesting that God used suffering to bring salvation to humanity. See, devil used sin to get us into suffering and God used suffering to get us into salvation. If it wouldn't be for suffering on the cross, there will be no healing, there will be no salvation, there will be no peace, there will be no redemption. And so while suffering came because of sin, we must understand there's a redemptive healing power in suffering. In Jesus' suffering. It took His death, it took His pain, it took Him dying on the cross, it took Him experiencing extreme financial poverty where they took His clothes away from Him. Where the Bible says He went thirsty because He says, I thirst. He was hungry for at least 24 hours because when he got arrested they didn't feed them. He went through object poverty. He went through rejection. He went through isolation. He went through betrayal and he went through abuse. He went through that suffering and it was that suffering God used to bring redemption, salvation and healing to humanity. So while I hate suffering, while I know that suffering really comes from sin, I also understand that it was suffering God used to bring healing, to bring deliverance and to bring blessing on earth. And Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, he says, you therefore as a good soldier of Christ endure suffering. The Bible says those who believe in God, they will experience suffering. Now we're not talking about the suffering that we are experiencing right now because these sufferings God helps us to overcome. The suffering that is mainly talked about in the New Testament is the suffering of persecution. The suffering we experience is not the suffering of persecution. It's the suffering of protection because we are trying to, we're not stuck at home. We're safe at home and that's why we have to change our perspective. You're not stuck, you're safe but there is suffering in it as well. Financial problems, maybe health issues, emotional problems that are really not causing us pain because we're in the community but right now being disconnected from community it surfaces insecurities, it surfaces rejection and loneliness in a way that many people have never faced it before. 
You know, I, my, my good friend, one of our team members who, who's, whose dad passed away, you know, it's, it's a really, really painful suffering because you can't have a funeral. You can't experience the comfort of the community because everybody's hunkered down at homes. And so if you are in that situation today and you are suffering, I want you to take courage. I want you to suffer well. I want you to not waste this suffering and remember that God used suffering to bring salvation. He may use even this suffering to bring something good out of it. I don't know what that could be. Romans 8 28 it says, for we know that all things work together for good for to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. But God is faithful. God is true and God loves you and that part of living in the broken world is that we come under sometimes the consequences of sins of others. Part of living in the broken world is that we experience pain. We experience suffering. Suffering of rejection, suffering of loneliness, suffering of fear, suffering of financial calamity, suffering of a rug being pulled from under our feet. And Apostle Paul went through suffering. In this particular story that I read to you, Paul did nothing to deserve it. In fact, he was in chains for the gospel. He was arrested in Jerusalem and then he was went from one trial to another trial. He was moved from one city to another city. There was an attempt upon his life and Paul literally lived like a fugitive. Arrested, arrested, a prisoner. And that's, that's painful. No longer had a job. No longer had influence. No longer had family connection. No longer had friends connections that could come and visit him. No longer able to do what he could do. And that was painful. And it was in those moments Paul would write to other churches and he would say, I say to you rejoice and again rejoice. And he would say, Paul your situation is, is difficult. And his difficult situation just became extremely difficult. He goes on this ship and Paul through common sense and probably through the Holy Spirit he is foreseeing that this voyage they're about to take is going to land them in a really bad place. He's, he's giving an advice to a ship to the captain ship and he says please we can't take this voyage right now because we, we might come under heavy storms but see when you're a prisoner your influence is very low to influence somebody in the position of leadership and the captain ignored the advice of Paul and went ahead in impatience to reach Rome faster and as Paul predicted the problem started to happen and the Bible says for 14 days they did not see the sun and now this pain that he went through of being a prisoner and he's about to be tried by Caesar and Roman things get so complicated where honestly Paul the Bible says in here they did this this despair of life meaning they didn't even think they're gonna make it they didn't think they're gonna make it people stopped eating for 14 days People start throwing stuff overboard because honestly, they were facing dead end. They're gonna die. And in the midst of all of this, being a prisoner and dying, being in a ship that lost its ability to move forward because of the storm that was coming upon them. Everything is dark. The angel of the Lord comes to Paul at night and he says this, he says, don't be afraid. I like what Paul said. He said, the angel of God whom I serve and to whom I belong. He said, don't be afraid. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. There is a reason to be afraid. But you have greater reasons not to be afraid. There are reasons to be scared, to be worried. There are reasons right now to honestly to fall into depression and despair. There are reasons to feel rejected and to feel isolated. There are reasons and if you will look for them right now, there are plenty of them. But there are reasons not to be. And you have a decision, which reason are you going to take into consideration today? The angel of the Lord comes to Paul and reminds him, Paul, you belong to me. Paul, you're serving alongside with me and as the angel of God, I was sent to serve you. And I want to tell you something, Paul, don't be afraid. You must be brought to Caesar. Meaning where you are headed to, you're gonna get there. 
the vision that you have it will come true yes this ship is not going to make it to Rome but Paul you are going to make it to Rome you must you will see the things you believe for Paul you will see your family serving God you will see healing you will see breakthrough you will you must be in front of Caesar in Rome therefore this ship is gonna die this ship is gonna crash but Paul you're gonna still get to your destination Paul you must be in Rome book of Romans must be written Paul there are books need to be written to other places you must be in Rome this is not gonna end here Paul I'm an angel of the Lord and you belong to me and I'm reminding you if I brought you to this I'll get you through it you will be there the only thing is that where you're headed to you're not gonna get how you intended to you plan that this ship this little comfortable thing that you had going this job this idea of how you're gonna get there Paul unfortunately that is gonna fall away but I'm gonna remind you you are still going to be in Rome can we sometimes we're so attached to our ships sometimes we're so attached to our ideas of how things need to be churned out and how things will be that honestly when things are shaking from under us we feel like our dream our vision and the promises of God are gone but remember God's promise is never connected to your ship it's connected to God and therefore even if your ship disappears God says listen I you belong to me and if I gave you a promise I am with you and the angel of God does not need the ship to get me to Rome my God even if your idea your dream begins to fall apart please understand God's promise for your life will still happen You must be brought to Caesar. Indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. You have a reason to be afraid. You have a reason to feel down. But you have a greater reason not to be. You belong to an angel of the Lord. You belong. There is an angel of God who encamps around those who fear God. This angel is assigned to you right now not only the Spirit of God lives in you not only God is your father not only you were called by God to be his son and his daughter but right now the Bible says is that the angel of the Lord who does not need a ship to move from point A to point B and he came to Paul and I believe he's coming to you and he says fear not I belong to you you belong to me and you will get to Rome but differently. This ship won't make to Rome. That business might, might not make to Rome. That, that idea of how your family and how your finances and how your marriage is going to be, that idea might not make it. But please understand, can God offend you on your methods and still get you to your destiny and you're not going to get offended? Can we give God that right to get us to Rome through a different means and not get attached to the things that got us to this place. I have a reason to be afraid but I have a greater reason not to be afraid and I choose the greater reasons. Father I just thank you right now for your presence. Holy Spirit I thank you that your angels are encamping around those who fear you. Lord I thank you that you are saying that to me today and you're saying that to every person. When your idea falls apart of how things were supposed to happen this year you will still stand before Caesar you will still reach your destination it might be longer it might be through detours it might be through different paths but you will still get to that place says the Lord and I, I want to see what happens next when Paul is encouraged not to be afraid the Bible says in chapter 28 of verse 10 they honored us in many ways and when we departed they provided such things as were necessary. After three months we sailed in Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers which had wintered at the island. If you're taking notes I want to highlight a second truth from this. If you lose your ship you will not drown. 
if you lose your ship you will not drown and here it says and I skipped that part where the ship actually fell apart that whole ship that they were on was broken into pieces but they did not die in fact God granted every person to Paul and nobody died everybody survived everybody made it on the island few months later after they were provided by the people on the island they no longer had the provisions of the ship they no longer had the provisions that they had on this boat but instead these natives provided for them they treated them kindly and the scripture says is after a few months there was a ship parked on the island it was Alexandrian ship with some kind of a head with the twin brother head and the Bible says is this ship was given to Paul and was given to the captain and to the rest of the people to get back to where they were supposed to go this ship represents your finances this ship represents our jobs this ship represents a safety of our job now for some of us today this ship is being tossed but it's safe but there is a majority of American people that are watching me right now that your ship is being broken. In fact, in the next week or something, it will be completely broken. And it's going to get worse before it's going to get better. And when your job fails, you must, you must have this revelation right now. Your God doesn't. God is Jehovah. And Him being Jehovah, he doesn't need the job to be Jehovah. He is Jehovah when you have a job or when you got unemployed. And here it says that Paul no longer was provided from the ship but the islanders provide. Maybe the unemployment check will become your island. Maybe somebody else will become your island for the next few weeks or even next few months. Maybe something else but God promises to Paul and God promises to you that not only that we will survive without a ship but there is a new ship that is already parked at the island that God is going to give us access to. And some of you, you will go to a new season in your business, you will go to a new season in your finances and that you will go through a very difficult time maybe in the next few months as people are going to seek less to do less business they're going to try to buy less they're going to try to really reserve and the businesses that they will struggle for the next few months but we must understand in these three months they were still provided by the people on the island and the scripture says they got a new ship get ready because even if this ship fails God has an Alexandrian ship he has a different one he has a different job for you. Why? Because He is Jehovah Jireh and He will still provide even if the job does not. If my resource, my job stops, my source is faithful. You know one of the ways I also receive um, uh, compensation is through travels, is when I travel. And so now that everything is closed down you know and I said Lord I trust you for the things that I have which is some commitments that me and my wife has made to give each month that will be very difficult to keep some of these commitments but I said Lord I trust you and in fact we're gonna take a step further and give our book for free because we get royalties from the Amazon and give our book for make the book available for free why because I never want to in my life connect God's provision to my job my job whether it's books whether it's even working at the church whether the other stuff that is a resource the God is the source and these are not just preacher words I live like this I want you to live like this that if the ship gets broken God still got you in the palm of his hand he will get you through but we have to keep one thing in mind in here it says that the natives provided for necessities, not luxuries. That means God's provision when the ship is gone is not in luxuries but in necessities. And we cannot go in and start complaining because when we get used to luxuries, luxuries are a lot of things that we had before this thing. And right now when we are going through this, if you have necessities and what is necessities? A roof over your head, food to eat, 
a shelter, a clothes to wear and a family to enjoy your time with. If you have necessities, you should thank God for that. God's provision in the storm is not in luxuries but in necessities. And you have to learn to thank God for just enough manna in the wilderness. Yes, in the promised land, milk and honey. In the, but in the wilderness, God's great provision is providing necessities. Necessities. Elijah, when the rain came down, there's a great harvest and everything incredible. But when the famine happened, when the drought came, the Bible says that the ravens came twice a day. Imagine Elijah had to skip lunch. No three meals. But he was, that story is seen as a great miracle of God. Until you are in that story, then you're like, where's my lunch? Because see, before the drought, three meals is God's provision. In the drought, God's provision is necessities. And God is looking at Elijah, he says, you got a king belly. You can get that little bit shaven off, so I'll cut you to two meals. Your necessities is my provision. Please understand, in the drought, God's provision is not in luxuries, but in necessities. And therefore, when you take that bread, when you take that sandwich, when you drink that tea, when you eat that breakfast, those pancakes, those waffles, rejoice in God. Thank God. Yes, you cannot go to a restaurant. Yes, taco trucks are closed. Yes, other things are closed. But at the same time, when you have your necessities to say, God, I thank you. Why? Because you're providing for us. You might say, but it's not what we used to have. Because in drought, in the storm, God provides through necessities, not luxuries. To readjust our gratitude, to readjust our faith. Can somebody say amen? What I learned is there is a great reason to fear, but there's a greater reason not to be afraid. That even if the ship fails, God will still get me through to my place. That provision is not always in luxuries, but provision is in necessities. I want to share to those people right now who are not being affected by this storm at all. And honestly, me saying this, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. I'm just so glad it's not me. I have a word for you as well. In 28 verse 2 it says the natives who were not affected by the storm watch this showed us unusual kindness natives the storm didn't affect them why they didn't live on a ship they lived on the island their financial structures were different their safety was different these other people they lived on a ship and therefore the storm wrecked them these people they had the savings account these people their business did not depend on all of that's happening in fact they thrived in it the storm came they were not affected and they didn't stand on the island and they said well sucks to be you today well guys uh that's why we don't do ships that's why we live on the island <laughs> yeah we saw that storm coming you guys all uh, lost everything yeah sucks to be you man I'm so sorry the Bible did not say they just felt sorry for people who survived the storm they didn't say well these are not our family and, mem and members these are none of our people we don't know these people by the way they're most of them are criminals and they're going to Rome we don't like Rome so uh you can just hang out on the island but kids come let's close the doors and let's hide from these crazy people who just survived the storm that's not what natives did they showed unusual compassion unusual kindness how does that look like in this season if you come in contact with somebody who's suffering right now financially but you're not this is not a moment to close your heart this is the moment to look at what you have extra and say how can i show unusual kindness not just how can I send a text message to say I'm praying for you but they don't need a prayer they need food but to say hey I'm sending some food to your house hey I'm gonna help help you with this show unusual kindness if this storm did not affect you 
some people truly need prayer they don't need food some people truly need somebody to zoom them in or facetime them or go on a google hangout and just spend 30 minutes just encourage them say hey I'm, I'm here for you I'm here with you I know you're going through a very difficult time you're alone over there some people need that kindness and we need to ask the Holy Spirit to show in which way that kindness need to be shown but I invite hungry gen family I invite our staff our pastoral team and our leadership team if you were not affected by this storm show unusual kindness let our city receive unusual kindness who are affected let the doctors the first responders the, the nurses the police officers the daycare workers the people who are on the front line let them experience from the natives unusual kindness who are coming in contact with this pandemic and in here it says that chapter um, 27 the fourth thing I want to share is that Paul told them after 14 days of not eating he says I urge you to take nourishment for this is for your survival since not only not a hair will fall from the head of any of you and when he had said these things he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all and when he had broken it they began to eat the fourth thing I want to share so the first thing I mentioned there's a reason for fear there's a greater reason not to be afraid the second thing I mentioned is that even if your ship falls apart you're not gonna drown God's gonna provide for you it might not be in luxuries but he will provide for you the third thing I mentioned is that if you were not affected by this it's a moment to be somebody's miracle show unusual kindness the next thing that I wanted to mention is that we need to eat at this time Paul did two things broke bread and gave thanks do not stop your devotional time with God during this time I know it's more difficult to maybe pray because some of you you got kids at home now uh, some of you maybe you got you have to work from home and the work kind of calls on you maybe you used to come to church to pray and now you know you can't find because there's no room there but Paul did this thing after 14 days he realized guys we need to do this for our survival he took bread and then he gave thanks I just want to challenge you I sent even to some of our leaders this morning and I said guys you got to get back into the word during this time do not let the reading of the scriptures and giving thanks to God spending time with the Holy Spirit be skipped right now just because you're in a quarantine feed your soul you might not control what you're feeling but you are responsible for what you're feeding yourself with feed yourself with word take the bread and break it and somehow some way I don't know how Paul could do it but the Bible says he gave thanks he gave thanks he didn't thank God for the storm he thanked God in the storm he didn't thank God for the storm he thanked God in the storm he says God I thank you because you are faithful and so right there in your situation you might be able to do exactly the same thing it's begin to break the bread and after you break the bread of God's Word begin to say God I thank you for good health I thank you for my salvation I thank you for the angels that are encamping around those who fear you God I thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life God I thank you that you saved me and delivered me from drugs and alcohol and sin I thank you that you delivered me from demons I thank you God that my home is secure in heaven God I thank you you are watching over me I thank you that you are providing for me I thank you you find pleasure in the prosperity of your servants God I thank you that many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all and God I'm a righteous man I thank you Lord God I thank you give thanks in the storm feed your spirit when you cannot control your feelings control your feeding can somebody say amen? amen and lastly in the 27th chapter verse 44 last verse it says the following I'll read the verse earlier but centurion wanting to save Paul kept them from their purpose which is to kill the, uh, the, the prisoners and commanded those who could swim should jump overboard first and the rest to land and the rest some on boards and some on parts of the ship and so it was that they all escaped safely to land it's gonna give you one pastoral very simple advice learn to swim in the places you used to sail there were three major storms in the Bible Jonah's storm the way he overcame it he sacrificed himself to it 
Jesus' storm, the way he overcame it, he spoke to it. And this is another very big storm in the Bible. And the way Paul overcame this storm, old school way, swimming. Typically, that's what we get ships for. But when the ship fails, guess what you learn to do? You learn to swim where you used to sail. In other words, you learn to work out from home where you used to work out in the gym. You learn to do work from home where you used to do it from the office. You learn to do things at home. Develop routines to keep your rituals that you used to have. It's difficult. I don't like swimming. And swimming is not a preference but if you cannot sail, God says learn to swim. Learn to do that thing that you used to do in a different way from home. You know how do they swim? The Bible says that every person grab hold of a piece of a board. I'm not going to use anything in here on the stage because everything is not broken. They took the piece, a broken piece of the board, hang on to, and uh, they hung on to it, and then they swim, swam with it. And I really believe that what we need to do in this season is get hold of a piece and swim with it. What does that mean? Focus on the blessings, not on the problems. Count blessings, not issues. Focus on what you have left, not on what you lost. Count God's blessings in love. Take the small little pieces and say, God, I thank you for that. A lot of other things are still not working out. I'm stuck in these areas, but God, I thank you. I thank you that I have a place to live. God, I thank you that I have a car. Lord, I thank you that I have clothes. Lord, I thank you that I am healthy. Lord, I thank you that I have a spouse and I have healthy children. Lord, I thank you that I have a calling. Lord, I thank you that I have salvation. Lord, I thank you that I have friends. Lord, I thank you that I have a counselor or a therapist. Lord, I thank you that I have a life group leader. I thank you that I have a pastor. Lord, I just want to say I thank you that both of my feet can walk. I thank you that I have a dog in my life. Lord, I thank you that I have access to to coffee in my house. Take the small piece. It's not a ship. It's just a small little piece and through that piece get to the other side. Begin to count your blessings not your problems. Begin to count your blessings not your problems. Focus on what you have left instead of on what you lost and swim and swim your way to the shore. Somebody give God some praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Let's rise to our feet. For those of you at home, you can sit as the worship team is come up, coming up right now. I want to remind you that the early church went through a heavy persecution and the Bible says everywhere they went, they preached. They realized we can't preach freely now, but we're going to preach even under persecution. Uh, in other words, they said we are still going to swim even if we can't sail. We are still going to evangelize even if we don't have the freedom. It will be different, but it will still happen. I want to challenge every life group leader still have your life group on Tuesday. Still swim. Even though it's not real because you're not in the room but you can do it in the Zoom. That rhymes. You can still do it in the Zoom even if it's not in the room. You can still swim even if you can't sail. Leaders, we are going to come together tomorrow night. Yes, it's going to look a little bit different. It's not going to be in a big ship. It's just going to be with a bunch of screens but we're going to swim where we used to sail. We're not pausing. Our life doesn't stop. God doesn't end anything. God wants us to continue. He just says, you can sail. Let's swim. And how do you do that? Grab hold of a piece. Take, if depression kicks your heart, if you're reminded of what's not working right now, of everything that's going bad, switch your frequency. Switch the frequency and take a piece of a board that's left and held on to it. And think about it. Take a testimony. If you don't have one piece, our YouTube has 2,000 of them. Borrow one of them and swim with it. Watch testimonies. Don't just watch more negative things. Watch things that God is doing. Look at your life of what God is doing. I remember recently I was encouraging a person who just got a really nice car. But this person doesn't have a job. And this person, you know, doesn't have money to... The car is almost paid off. But doesn't have money to, to continue to do other things. And I looked at this person and said, listen. I'm like, look at this. You have an Apple watch. You got an iPhone. It's not broken. You have a MacBook. I said, look at, I know it's material things. So is the board that Paul was swimming on. And I said, you got a car. I know you don't have a ship, 
but look at the things that you have I was like force your focus on things you got your faith positive thinking I'm like all of us have certain things right now we don't have all of us have certain things that we're like ah but we know in three months we're gonna get an Alexandrian ship and, and it's, it's all gonna be passed but for right now we're gonna get hold of the things that God is doing and focus on them and say Lord we praise you eat the eat the food and give God the praise as we're gonna worship we're going to pray for you right now but before we pray for healing can you take the mic? before we pray for healing which we are going to do in just a moment I would like to ask those people who are watching us on Instagram Facebook or YouTube who have not given their life to Jesus Christ who does not know Jesus maybe like Jamie you used to be Catholic you became agnostic then you became atheist or maybe you're completely unchurched you have nothing to do with God Christianity Jesus Christ is reaching out today to you through the means of media last week we saw many people who got healed and received Jesus as the personal Lord and Savior through a means just like this and this week it could be you it doesn't matter if you're watching from India or you're watching from Canada or you're watching from Australia or South Africa or you're watching down the street in Pasco Jesus Christ is there where you are at right now and right there where you are maybe feel like you're in a lockdown the Lord is reaching out to you all you have to do is place your trust in Jesus confess him as your Lord and Savior and repent of your sins and if you would like to do that with me right now and you say Vlad I am not there where I'm supposed to be with God I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I would like to get saved today I would like Jesus to come into my heart right now you can do that with me right now whether you're re-watching this or watching this live pray this with me pray this out loud it's okay that your family can hear it. They've been praying for you to be saved. They can all start praying for you and be happy for you. Let's pray together. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your blood. I repent of all my sin, of my rebellious ways. Deliver me from the grip of sin and the grip of Satan. I surrender my life the best I know how. Come and live in me. Give me your peace. Give me your light and your salvation. I receive you right now in Jesus name. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart Jesus Christ is Lord, you receive the gift of forgiveness. I would like you to pull out your phone even if you're watching us on live stream. Go to hungrygen.com slash God saved together. There's going to be a link right now below. Hungrygen.com slash God saved. Like God milk, but God saved together. Go there, fill out your card so that we can connect with you in the next few days to congratulate you on the decision you made to follow Jesus. It's the best decision. I can encourage you to get plugged into a local church after all of this is over. Read your word and pray to God daily because he wants to hear from you. Hey, this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon. Please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community. And click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.